Good morning. Today we are going to solve free response question number five from the 2019 AP Physics 1 exam. Bobby, please read the problem through part A. Flippin' physics. A tuning fork vibrating at 512 hertz is held near one end of a tube of length L that is open at both ends as shown. The column of air in the tube resonates at its fundamental frequency. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. Part A, calculate the length L of the tube. Thank you, Bobby. All right, I have a video, Wind Instrument Frequencies, link in the description. And if you are at all confused about this problem, you should really start there. Bo, please answer part A. Okay, well, as we learned in that video, because the tube is open at both ends, each end will have a displacement antinode, and when resonating at its fundamental frequency, the standing wave created will have the longest possible wavelength, which can create a standing wave pattern in this tube. Therefore, there will be no other displacement antinodes in the tube, and the standing wave pattern will have a displacement antinode on each end and a displacement node in the middle. In this case, then, half a wavelength will equal the length of the tube. Oh yeah, we, we also know for a wave that speed equals frequency times wavelength. Therefore, we can determine the length of the tube. Wavelength equals speed over frequency. Therefore, the length of the tube equals the speed of the wave over two times the wave frequency, or 340 over two times 512, which works out to be 0.332031, or 0 0.33 meters with two sig figs. Well done, Bo. Billy, please read and answer part B. Part B. The column of air in the tube is still resonating at its fundamental frequency. On the axes below, sketch a graph of the maximum speed of air molecules as they oscillate in the tube as a function of position x, from x equals zero, left end of tube, to x equals l, right end of tube. Ignore random thermal motion of the air molecules. What does ignore random thermal motion of the air molecules mean? I think it means we are ignoring the fact that air that is quote-unquote stationary actually has air molecules in it that are moving around in all directions, and the average speed of the air molecules equals zero, which is why we consider the air as a whole to not be moving. And it is that motion of the air molecules we are ignoring. Right, Mr. P? Correct, Bobby. Billy, please keep going. Well, there is a blank graph with maximum particle speed on the y-axis and exposition in terms of L on the x-axis. So, um, uh, how can we have different maximum particle speeds at different points on the graph? I think there should be just one single maximum particle speed because that's what maximum means, right? Oh, I, I know this one. At every location along the tube, air molecules are moving around at slightly different speeds, so each location has a maximum particle speed for all the air molecules at that location. Ah, that makes sense. Thanks. Very nice. But we still need to answer the question. To help you out, I'm going to add a similar animation to the animation in the wind instrument frequencies video I mentioned before. This approximates the ideal movement of air particles in the standing wave pattern of a tube open on both ends, resonating at its fundamental frequency. Billy, please answer the question now, what does this graph look like? Okay. Actually, uh, on the AP exam, we are not going to have that handy animation. So it is useful to remember that blowing air over an open end of a tube causes a standing wave pattern in the tube. The air we are blowing over the open end of the tube is clearly moving, so that makes an open end a displacement antinode, which means a closed end must be a displacement node. We saw that in the wind instrument frequencies video you mentioned earlier, but... That makes sense. You know. So, at the displacement node in the middle of the tube, at x equals L over 2, we can see in the animation that the air molecules are not moving at all. That's what a node means. All the waves cancel out and produce no wave at all. That is called total destructive interference. At both ends of the tube, there are displacement antinodes, and we can see in the animation that the air molecules there have the largest speed, 
Therefore, at x equals 0 and x equals L, put a mark at the top of the graph. Between those points, well, I'm not really sure what the curve looks like. However, I know it is vertically symmetrical about x equals L over 2, and, and I'm guessing it's concave down, so that is what I think it looks like. Thanks, Billy. This looks great. I want to say a few things about the scoring guidelines for Part B. This graph is worth 3 out of 7 points for this problem. One point each for a curve with a node or 0 at L over 2, a curve with, a, with maxima at 0 L and no other points, a non-horizontal curve that is symmetric about L over 2 and non-negative everywhere. To clarify what this means, as long as your curve has a y value of 0 only at L over 2, shows maximum values only at 0 and L, is never negative, is not horizontal, and is vertically symmetric about x equals L over 2, you get full points. In other words, the exact shape of the curve you draw is not graded, and they do not expect you to know exactly what the shape of the curve should be. So please, do not freak out if you do not fully understand how to draw a graph. Sometimes you will only know specific locations and have to interpolate between those known locations, like we did here in Part B. Okay, Bo, please read and answer Part C. Part C. The right end of the tube is now capped shut, and the tube is placed in a chamber that is filled with another gas in which the speed of sound is 1,005 meters per second. Calculate the new fundamental frequency of the tube. Okay, well, now that the tube is closed on one end, the closed end is a displacement node, and the open end is still a displacement antinode. Again, when resonating at its fundamental frequency, the standing wave created will have the longest possible wavelength to create a standing wave pattern in the tube. Therefore, there will be no other displacement nodes or antinodes in the tube, and the standing wave pattern will look like this. Now, only one quarter of a wavelength fits in the length of the tube, which means the wavelength of the wave equals 4 times L, and we can calculate the new fundamental frequency of the tube using the new speed of sound. Frequency equals speed over wavelength, so the fundamental frequency equals speed over 4 times the length of the tube. So the fundamental frequency equals 1,005 over 4 times 0 0.332031, which equals 756.706 or 760 hertz with two sig figs. That is correct, Bo. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.